Well, welcome to the Speak With People podcast. My name is Jason Reitz. I'm excited that you're joining us today. We believe that healthy communication is oxygen for our relationships and our leadership. So whether you communicate one-on-one to a team from a stage or from behind a screen, when you choose to communicate in healthy ways, you really will breathe life into the people you communicate with. So this podcast exists to challenge you, inspire you, encourage you to communicate in healthy ways. So when you do, we're really excited for how you will drastically change your world. Well, today I am so excited because we're talking about trust. We're going to embark on this kind of profound exploration of trust in our interpersonal communication. So often trust is seen as just this black and white uh, concept. Um, and so we're, we're going to dive into all things trust today. What if trust is on a sliding scale? What if it's not solely about trusting the person, but also about restoring trust? And so we're going to challenge maybe some tr- traditional notions that delve into the dynamic nature of trust. And we're going to discover how leaders can model this effective communication, cultivate trust, explore the power of word choice, and uh, build this unwavering trust with our team. So brace yourself. I just can't wait. And I'm so excited because today I am joined by a longtime friend. I've known her many, many years. She is just an incredible leader who has been in so many different leadership positions where she has had to learn on the front lines uh, how to lead and has done it well for so many years. I'm going to let her tell you more about her journey. But today I am excited to have Jackie Jeffrey join me today. Welcome, Jackie, to the podcast. Hey, Jay. It's awesome to be on here. I love it. Well, I love it. Well, hey, before we dive in and we jump into a little bit more about this topic, I thought, hey, let's let's take a second, you know, uh, have you tell our listeners a little bit more about your story, who you are, what you do, all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, like you said, I've been and a leader in many capacities. Um, uh, First, even within my family, Um, I can say, and I don't know how many people say this, but I have two amazing teenagers at home um, who have been blessed by parents that love leadership. And we talk to each other a lot like this. I have teenagers who give me feedback and who tell me when they struggle to trust me. Um, I have an amazing husband who, again, is like that with me. Um, But my career side started in education. I started as a teacher, was planning to be a teacher for 30 plus years and retire from that. And Mm. that wasn't the story God created for me. I kept being called into leadership and was um, a school leader for over nine years. I opened a building as a principal. I was a superintendent. And then finally within the school system, I was the director of school leadership development for National Heritage Academies. It's a charter school company. Um, So I led a team that was um, in charge of doing all of the leadership development for over 500 leaders in nine different states. Um, And with that, really kind of stepped into the business world. Um, Mm. As a director, I was in the corporate office and so got that corporate setting experience and really started to have a passion for um, what it looked like to lead and help develop health in organizations and on teams. Mm. And that's what really led me outside of education to um, become a certified coach and to do more um, coaching and leadership development within companies. Wow, that's fantastic. Uh, And so (laughs) this topic is just absolutely crazy because you know, fostering a culture of trust within your team or organization is uh, pretty important. So as a leader, then how do you model Mm -hmm. effective communication consistently? And then how do you build trust, you know, with those interactions? Because it's almost like every single interaction, you're just, you know, building a little bit more Mm -hmm. trust. Yeah. um, So a lot of my study and a lot of my work has really led me to a foundational belief that I have about leadership, that leadership starts with self-leadership. And the best leaders have really 
gone into themselves, developed self-awareness, developed humility, mm. um, and grace. Um, so you have to be able to open yourself up and you have to be able to really examine yourself as a leader before you can lead in a healthy way others. Wow. And, and honestly, I mean, it is so difficult sometimes because we get into the mode of leadership and we just think I got to get my way. I got to get this project done. I need everybody to just to fall in line. And sometimes, you know, it takes great humility you know, mm -hmm. great grace to go, okay, I got to back up a little bit and I just can't plow everybody over. I got to bring them along with me. Oh yeah. 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 And I was that leader at one time. I was the bull in the China shop. I was the bulldozer. I've, I've changed who I am from the inside wow. to become a better leader for others. Okay. So this was not on the question sheet that I sent you, but I love the depth you just dove in right there. So what, what made the switch in you? Did you hit a, you know, a plateau? Did, did something happen? Did somebody confront you? I mean, did, did it just stir inside of you? What, what caused you to make that switch? Um, I had great leaders that I was blessed to be around hmm. that, um, feedback was given in a way that it was, um, really helping me see blind spots. So helping me see what I couldn't see. I also have always taken feedback from people above me, people below me in an organization. Um, as a school leader is where that transition actually came. I had um, one of my assistant principals really tell me how some of my behaviors were affecting them. Wow. And I had the ability to take a step back and say, that's not my intent, but that's the perception that's coming through. So in order to be perceived differently, I had to change. Yeah, boy, that's so difficult. It's so mm -hmm. difficult, but it's so important. And it's, I mean, especially when we get to a place as a leader where we have that self-awareness where we go, okay, I've got to really listen mm -hmm. to this. So yeah. much of communication is, you know, especially with developing trust is using our words. I mean, it's just amazing. Yeah. We, we talk about this all the time on this podcast, the effect that words have to stick, to shape, to form people. So when it comes to, you know, building kind of some significant levels of trust with our communication as leaders, mm -hmm. uh, what do you think? What are some strategies, maybe some techniques, you know, leaders can employ to make sure they're, they're choosing the right word choices as they're speaking into people? Well, I think the big thing in this area is we're blessed right now. Language is a big topic out in the world, um, from Brene Brown to multiple other um, thought leaders that I've right. read. Um, language is really coming to the surface and people are diving deeper into that. So if there are leaders out there that haven't jumped on that bus yet, I highly suggest it. Um, and that again is where that humility and self-awareness comes in. It's yep. um, looking at and starting to understand and be able to hear those different types of language in yourself as a leader and in wow. those you're leading. Um, is there victimizing language coming through? Is there disempowering? Is there minimizing? Am I projecting? Am I distancing? I've even been in situations where um, the gaslighting is happening. Oh, yeah. um, so all of these things, it's, it's having the ability to recognize words that tend to be red flags that that type of um, language is happening and call it out in others and also understand it in yourself. Um, I think another good way to look at even language is where, why am I speaking the way I'm speaking right mm. now? Mm. Things come from a place a lot of times when we aren't speaking in a healthy way, it's because we're in some sort of survival mode. We've had some sort of past instance or trauma. And right. so four areas that that you can come back to in thinking, okay, why am I speaking this way right now? Is it to look good? Is it to feel good? Is it to be right? Is it to be in control? Um, those are some of those survival things that we need to look at in ourselves and start to hear in others and help them to see. So those are the types of things. When you ask how, how we choose those words, I believe it's deeper than that. It's understanding wow. where the words are coming from and what you're truly trying to communicate in the moment. 
Wow. Wow. And it really does. I mean, you, you kind of laid it out at the very beginning with that foundation of, you know, that self leadership. I mean, I know many, mm -hmm. many leaders have said it, you know, the toughest person you're going to lead is yourself. And I mean, we start off, we have all this energy and we're like, ah, I don't need to listen yeah. to any of that kind of stuff. And then we, <laughs> we get to a place where we're like, no, no, I, I got to really be on top of this. Mm hmm. Yeah. I, as a leader, did, has, have you ever had that moment where maybe you rushed ahead with some word choices in the, you know, in the heat of the moment, you said some things to, you know, someone that you led on your team that you, you know, you, you knew after you said it, oh, I wish I could take that back. Uh, have have oh, you had yeah. one of those moments that stick out where you, where you went back, you actually went back to that person and said, Hey, can we, you know, can we revisit that conversation? I've got some things that I need to say differently. Oh yeah. And that's where that <laughs> bull in the China shop and the bulldozer yeah. comes in. That was yeah. early school leadership. Um, I think this is one of my favorite stories that an assistant principal told me as I was a principal years later, she came back to me and said, you know, when everybody asks you in an interview who the best leader is you worked for and who the worst leader is, she goes, you are the answer to both of those oh. questions for me. <laughs> and it was because of my communication, because of those things in the beginning. Um, but she also said I had that ability to listen and to better myself and change and become a better leader. And that's how I became that, that best leader. Wow. And I have no problem owning my mistakes and saying yep. there, was, there was a team meeting at one point where I actually asked her to stop talking. Wow. And I said, yep. you need to just stop talking right now. And yep. if, if you are a leader that has any self-awareness, you feel it. I feel it in my chest. Other people feel it other places. Yep. But yep. I went to her afterwards and I had to humble myself and say, look, yep. that was wrong. That was not what needed to happen at that point. And yeah. we talked through it. And I have skills now to rebuild trust that I didn't even have then. But God bless her for having the ability to to continue with that. And uh, she started wow. a, a fun thing with me. She took this candy bit of honey, which nobody eats and nobody can <laughs> find anywhere. So I don't know how she got that. But if if she saw me um, approaching that type of communication again, I would find a bit of honey in my my mailbox. And it was just a cue to yep. self-reflect. Yep. Wow. Well, a couple yeah. of things. One, I mean, you just took me back to my childhood, right? Like th those those candies were like filling removers. Yes. <laughs> but then two, I mean, that really speaks to like a deep level of trust you know, with your team that you, mm -hmm. you know, you were able, they were able to come to you and have those kind of conversations. Mm -hmm. I love that because in so many places, you know, it just doesn't exist. I remember years ago, I led a team and I walked into the room and, you know, I could feel the entire room get tense when I walked in and I thought, mm -hmm. wait a minute, I'm Jason, I'm the fun guy. But when yeah. I put on leadership hat, you know, it was like, we're charging forward, you know, get out of the way if you're not going to help. And it, it just it just hit me and you just gave us such gold there to be able to recognize some of those self-awareness habits that we need to be able to put into place so our team, you know, can be able to do that. Ah, trust so often, right? It's associated with transparency, with authenticity. How do we balance the need for uh transparency? And then <laughs> And then, you know, I mean, some people take it to like the very far end, like, okay, you're going way too far with, you know, transparency, but you know, how do we balance that need? How do we be transparent, but not go too far? What are your, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think that's, that's kind of a, that's a, an area of ground that people need to kind of figure out the balance themselves. And it does, you do swing in that pendulum a little bit, but what I have learned um, that has worked in the line of leadership is an understanding for myself that, um, you know, I'm a big proponent of um, Pat Lencioni and he talks about team one and team one is the team you serve on and then you have the team you lead. So it took me a while, but I learned that on that 
that team one, the team I served on, sometimes there were things I heard. Sometimes there were things that were being discussed that weren't fully worked out yet. And even though I knew the team I led needed to hear this, mm -hmm. I had to learn that I had to be patient and wait mm. until it was the right the right communication and that it was a cascading communication that came from this whole team one. Okay. And part of the transparency was even bringing the team that I led into that, letting them know that when the time was right, I was always going to bring them into everything they needed to know. But there were times that I would be shouldering it for a little while until it was the right time. Mm. Um, and with trust, they do trust you in that. And, yeah. you know, it also helps to learn that fine balance of when to share and when sharing is oversharing. Um, but right. Yeah. Wow. That's good. So ha, um, with the Patrick Lencioni, I've, I've just started to dive into the working genius. I, I read mm -hmm. that and I'm like, oh, my goodness, so many teams will grow exponentially if they figure out. You know, if they walk through this together and be able to figure out which, you know, uh, area that they're coming from. So, you know, yeah. for teams, then how important do you think it is to go through something like Working Genius or Strength Finders or, you know, whatever the program is? And if there's one that you recommend. Oh, yeah. Um, I again, I, I love <laughs> me some Pat Lencioni. Um Mm. I've done um, and I, I facilitate the two day leadership workshops with okay. the five dysfunctions of a team and with um, uh, with working geniuses. But, you know, what I found, I've I've done strength finders. I've done Enneagram. I, I love disc. They all have different pieces. Mm. And um, I, don't, I don't know that I can personally say that any is better than the other they all encourage self-awareness mm. and it's that self-awareness and then the awareness of the people that you're working with and a better understanding of who they are and why they do what they do yeah. that's where the power comes in um so what whichever one works for you is great um you know i again i I've found my success with Pats because they all work great together, but yeah. um, I can't discount other ones I've worked through too. Right. Absolutely. Oh, that's so good. And really, I mean, when a team takes that time to be able to dive in, I was um, walking through a, a company not too long ago and in the cubicles and the workspaces and the offices outside, uh, this team was really into um, Meyer Briggs. And so mm -hmm. they, they had their Meyer Briggs listed on mm -hmm. their door or their cubicle. So when you walked up, yeah. they had Meyer Brig and they, I think they had the Enneagram listed. And so mm -hmm. it was like, oh, I'm walking into an eight space. Like <laughs> I, I better prepare, you know, like it was, yeah, that was something. Yeah. Okay. So let's turn a corner here for a second. I mean, what, <laughs> let's talk about when that trust is broken. I mean, oh my goodness. You know, we've all been there. Things have been said, things have been, I mean, you look at, you know, so many people leave uh, their company, not so mm -hmm. much because they hate the company, because the company, you know, did something wrong to them. It's typically because of a direct supervisor who broke trust with them or, you know, something along those lines. So when it comes to, you know, rebuilding that trust, uh, how do we go about that? You know, when when it when we've, you know, it, the trust was fragile, it's been damaged. What are some, you know, practical ways leaders can be on the proactive side to repair it? Let's start in, you know, the the leadership seat. So you're the, you're the supervisor, you've broken trust with maybe, you know, one of your your staff members or employees. What are some ways for that person to kind of go about that process of rebuilding the trust? Yeah, I think if if you'll permit me going back a little bit before rebuilding and understanding trust in a different capacity helps first. Um, you know, one of the things in my studies of trust and a lot of the programs I've gone through that is that really helped me was trying to figure out is trust all or nothing, meaning Ooh. When do you say I trust this person and I don't trust this person? Yeah. Um, I'm sure you're like me. If anyone ever said, I don't trust you, I would shatter mm. because that's me. That is me personally as a person. You're saying you don't trust me. Right. Well, that's where I found um, 
in a program, a leadership program I went through years ago with a company called Leading by Design. Mm. Um, they talk about the five fingers of trust. And this brought more of a context to me in the area of trust than I've ever seen before. And I used this on my team and it was so beneficial. So they call it the five fingers because an easy way to remember it is to look at your hand and associate each area of trust with your hand. Yeah. So we start like this. And we know that when you're looking at the middle finger and that's the <laughs> finger on your hand, there's a certain association with that finger. And the middle right. finger is your tallest finger on your right. hand. That's your integrity. Mm. So that's your character and your integrity right there. Wow. And um, so your integrity is something that people can trust or distrust. Then we look at the ring finger. And as you can see, I have a ring on. We associate that ring finger with the rings and the rings associate to commitment. Mm. So your ring finger is commitment. You know, at, can I trust your commitment to this project, to this team, to this organization? Um, then we look at your pinky finger, which is your smallest finger on your hand. And that is your competency. And we, we have competency as the smallest because it's not of the five. It's not the biggest thing that we mm. fully need to worry about with someone. It's also an area where people tend to grow. Uh -huh. um, then looking at your pointer finger, that is alignment. Do I trust that we're aligned on this, on this conversation, on this direction, on this goal? So we kind of look at it this way, and this is our alignment. And the final area is your thumb. And we know I come from education, so we, we use our thumbs a lot to communicate, thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs sideways. But the interesting thing about the thumb too is it is the only finger on the hand that can touch every other huh. finger. So with that, communication touches every other area. You can have your communication within alignment, your integrity, your communication in your integrity, wow. your communication with commitment, and your communication in your competency. So coming to a person and saying, you know, Jay, I don't trust you. Mm. Or I could come to you and say, Jay, I'm struggling to trust your communication. Wow. This is something that happened. And the area that that I'm struggling to trust is is the, is the communication. You you didn't clearly communicate something, and it, and it caused this for me. Yeah, I can take that, and I can work with that. If someone yeah. came to me and said, Jackie, I'm struggling to trust your communication. Yeah, it's not going to break me the same way as saying, Jackie, I don't trust you. Right. So right. when you talk about. Um, wow trust being fragile and damaged, those are areas that you can look at. Um, you can look at, is it is it one of those areas that I can come to that person and talk about? Or it's, you know, we can also look at commitments that we make to people. And um, there's, there's another easy four-step process that you can use to restore trust. Mm. And the first thing is acknowledgement. So you acknowledge either I broke this commitment that I made to you or potentially, you know, I, I acknowledge that I um, miscommunicated this. So this yeah. is me as a leader saying I broke this commitment to you or I, um, I miscommunicated this. It can be on the other side, too. You can say, hey, you know, you committed to doing this by this date and it was... It, you broke that commitment. So it can go either way. The acknowledgement can go either way, but you start by acknowledging what it is. Then you explore the impact with the other person. Hmm. So if I broke a commitment to you, Jay, I would say, okay, so I, I apologize. You know, I, I, I had not acknowledge that I broke this commitment to you. How did that impact you? Did that create hmm. a mess on your side? Did that create a mess for your team? And help me understand what that mess was. How did, how did this trust that was broken impact you? Then the third step is to ask for forgiveness. Mm. That's where that humility comes in and that grace. Yep. Um, please forgive me for doing this. And then the fourth step is clean up the mess. Ask, how can I clean up? How can I make the mess that my, um, my, 
missing this commitment or my miscommunication created for you, how can I help clean up that mess? Yeah. So you acknowledge it, you explore the impact, you ask for forgiveness, wow. and then you figure out how to, you can clean it up. Wow. I, I mean, that, that's absolute gold. I mean, there are so <laughs> many, there are so many leaders. I mean, oh my goodness. I mean, imagine, yeah, imagine, I mean, culture is everything in so many places and culture gets broken because we're, leaders just aren't doing these kind of steps. You know, yeah. we're hoping that the problem will go away. We don't say anything about it. We ignore that it ever happened. But imagine if we actually had the bravery, the courage, you know, in our communication to acknowledge, just walk through these kind of steps. I mean, our, yeah. yeah. And this is, this is teammate to teammate too. Yeah. I mean, that creates that safe dynamic on a team where it's, I can come admit that I messed up. I can admit that it probably created a mess for you and I can fix it and we can move on yeah. with no shame, blame, guilt, or judgment. Yeah. Wow. That's good. That's good. When it comes to, you know, we've talked a lot about words and all that. When it comes to our nonverbal communication, I mean, it's mm -hmm. a, I mean, it's a crazy percentage, right? I mean, like how much nonverbal communication affects each other. You know, what are some ways that we can go about, you know, making sure we're leveraging our nonverbals, you know, to mm -hmm. communicate trust, to help with that trust process? Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I'm, I'm also a good case study in that one. <laughs> um, I do, if you're playing poker against me, I have a great poker face because it's in your favor. Um, uh, again, it's that awareness yeah. and the awareness comes from having people that can help hold you accountable. Um, one of the fun things about me personally is that I have a gluten sensitivity. Mm. I react to gluten and I feel sick for a good 24 hours if I have gluten. And I remember one time in, um, uh, as a school principal, it was the first day of professional development back for the staff in the summer. And I was having a gluten response. Mm. And I know as the leader of that building, these teachers look at me and they're reading everything on me. Yep. So I had to open that day saying specifically, look, I had gluten. You are going to see things on my face that are discomfort, that are looking not so pleasant. It has nothing to do with you. <laughs> right. Wow. It's it's knowing those things about yourself and bringing other people into it. Yeah. Um, and, you know, the nonverbals are not just, you know, your facial features, your characteristics. It's it's tone. Um, and that was another area that I had a struggle with in the past. My tone would ramp up. And again, I had a great person in my life professionally that came up with a cue for me. She would put one finger up and that was the cue that check mm. your tone. Wow. It was just, I, who knows where it's coming from, but something's going on in you and check that. And, and I gave that cue to anyone that needed it because I cared enough to say, you know, if, if my tone is raising, there's something going on in me, it's not the people. So yep. they can help me and I can put myself in check. Yep. Wow. That's so good. I know uh, for me at times in the past, I would ba uh, break trust with some team members because I would let uh, some sarcasm get out of mm -hmm. hand or uh inappropriate joking you know i mm -hmm. mean just you know let a joke go too far and you know all that kind of stuff and it, it i mean it really does <clears throat> i wanted to ask your opinion on something when it comes to trust uh, i had a, a supervisor years ago that said hey when you start with this company uh it, you know you're starting with you know basically a full picture like the trust picture picture is full and every time you break that trust, you know, your break, you know, mm -hmm. it's just dipping out a little bit more. And a bunch, a couple years ago, I actually had someone, a supervisor who was like, no, I, I do the exact opposite. Like you start empty and you got to build trust with me. And I went, oh, okay. So I'm just, you know, from your, you know, your experience level, uh, I'm just curious what you think about those two, which one resonates with you? Um, I personally go in with the full trust. Yeah. Um, it's who I am. It's, it's, it's the way things have gone, you know, um, used to be the burn me once, 
rule, but yep. you know, starting yep. to look at trust in a different light. Um, I can fully go in and trust people because I'm using skills when that trust is broken yeah. to consistently restore it. Um, and grace goes a long way. Um, you know, we all make mistakes and that's, you know, I kind of look at that, that, that jar that you're talking about, that's full, it's trust and grace. Mm. It's, I have been given grace so many times in my life and I've learned from every mistake I've made. And I've, I admit I was a bulldozer and yeah. I'm not anymore, yeah. but the only way I got there was because people allowed me to make mistakes yep. and gave me the grace to move forward. Mm. So I just, if that trust goes down, you can fill it back up with grace. Yep. Oh, I think that's so huge. I think that's so huge. Well, I mean, goodness, I have about uh, eight other questions I could ask you, but <laughs> I'm, we're going to have to get part B scheduled because uh, this is just, you have given us so much to think about and and just the, so many good practical nuggets. So uh, we're going to make sure we post uh, the notes, you know, it, we'll, put, we'll post all the notes from this conversation in the show notes and the links to some of the things that we've talked about. But before I let you go, I thought, hey, let's, you know, help our audience to kind of keep getting to know you. So we're going to do some rapid fire questions. These are just kind of fun, uh, but, okay. but also, you know, get us uh, into your mind a little bit more. So first question, uh, do you recommend, is there one book that every leader should read? Like, this is just like, you got to read this one. I have a list, but I would say one of them, sticking with the the co topic and concept I've done so far today would be The Go-Giver mm. by Bob Berg. Okay. Um, really looking at giving, continuously giving, and seeing how things come back that way. I love that. I love that. Okay. Is there a podcast or a YouTube, you know, TEDx talk that you're like, this is... You, you got to listen to this. I got to go with my boy, Pat, at okay. the table with Pat Lencioni. So yeah. that's his table group one or his working geniuses. Yeah. Okay. Fun question just for you, you and your family. Mm -hmm. What is one of your favorite, you know, vacation spots? Like I, you may not want to give it away because then more people will go. But, you know, what's that? What's that spot where you're just like, oh, every time we go, it's just incredible. I don't know if I... I can give it away because many people go there anyways. We are a Disney family. Okay. <laughs> and we hit Disney all the time, but we always hit Epcot. Epcot has mm. a special place in our hearts because my husband's family helped build it. Um, his wow. stepdad and his step grandpa were foremen on it. So every time when my kids were younger and we'd go up into spaceship earth, they would tell anyone around them <laughs> that their poppy helped build it. So really we have a cool. special connection there. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. Well, I've, I've, I live about an hour 45 from Disney now, so we've never been to Epcot. So maybe that's the push that I need to, I need yes. to make. That'd be great. Okay. Before I let you go, uh, can you, you know, Point us, where should we find out more information about you, your coaching, all of that kind of stuff online? Absolutely. Um, you can look me up. I'm Jacqueline or Jackie Jeffrey on um, LinkedIn. Um, my current website is going through a redevelopment, but it'll be back up in a week or two. And that is j2c2.co. So that's J Jeffrey Coaching and Consulting. Nice. Um, and then my email is the same, Jackie okay. at j2c2.co. Fantastic. And we'll put all of that in the notes as well. Well, Jackie, my friend, thank you so much for joining us on the Speak with People podcast. This has been absolutely rich. I took so many notes and I know it's <laughs> going to help just a ton of our listeners. So thank you, you know, so much for your time today. Awesome. Thanks. I loved it. Absolutely. Well, thank you again for joining us on the Speak With People podcast. Wow, what a great episode. I'm so excited uh, that you were able to be a part of this. Thanks again for listening, for sharing this podcast with people you know in your sphere of influence, your network that would be helpful for. Uh, before I let you go, I just want to make sure you know uh, the pathway is live and ready. So are you a leader who... You know, every time you're asked to speak in public, you just got the beads of sweat and your stomach start to roll and the ums come out. Well, the pathway is for you. This is a eight step guide to help you become a more confident, clear and captivating communicator. 
Basically what we've tried to do is take 30 years of public speaking from my experience and put it into eight different modules for you. So go to speakwithpeople.com slash the pathway. There's a free download there so you can kind of get the information and then you can get information about the course while you're there as well. Again, thank you for being a part of the Speak With People podcast. It is just awesome that you're a part of our community. This podcast exists because we believe that healthy communication is oxygen for our relationships in our leadership. So whether you communicate one-on-one -on -one, to a team from a stage or from behind the screen, we hope that our time today challenged you to communicate in healthy ways. So we know that your world will be better when you do. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.